Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina. Hi, welcome to Christ the King Church. I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's starter. I want to welcome you to the service today, but I want to take a moment and tell you about some of our services here at Christ the King through the week. From On Sunday morning, from 10 to 10.30, we have Sunday school. At 10.45, we have communion, which is open to all baptized believers. At 11 o'clock, we start our worship service. At the end of our worship service, we have a time of ministry where our elders will anoint you with oil and pray over you for healing or whatever your need may be. On Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, we have our regular midweek service. On Thursday, this is our little special meeting that I want to take a moment and explain to you about. It's called our healing room evening. It's from 6.30 to 8, and it's a time of teaching and ministry time. The teaching is from 6.30 to 7.30 because we believe that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. At 7.30 to 8, it's the ministry portion of it in which we have a group of people that will pray over you for whatever your need may be, be it physically, financially, emotionally, mentally, whatever you desire prayer for, they will come in agreement with you about. Also, if you do not have a specific need that you want prayer over, feel free to come and join us anyway from 6.30 to 7.30 during the teaching time. At this time, again, I would like to welcome you, and we will join the ministry now. I'm Pastor Sam Parsons. I'm one of the associates here, and I want to welcome all of you who are watching us by TV or YouTube or whatever means that you're watching us. This is our midweek service, and we're going to be talking tonight about the healing breakthrough. Turn with me, if you would, to Mark chapter 5, beginning with verse 35. There came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James, and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, you see what he said there? When he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. Straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded it some, that something be given her to eat. Now, isn't it interesting here that Jesus only allowed even a few of his own disciples to come with him, and on top of that, when he got there, he put everybody else out of the house. You know, there's times when you've got to be around people who have faith. For God to work in your life, you don't need to have doubt and unbelief around you. There's some people that I won't share things that I'm trusting God for because I know they don't have the faith for it. You don't need to tell everybody what you're believing God for. You need to know if they've got faith, if they believe in God, and they believe in the same things that you do. We have the audacity to believe God still does things that He's always done. We believe in healing. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And you'll find that we're in the minority by a great deal in this area. You're in Mark. Let's go to chapter 6. I want to look at verses 5 and 6, and this just kind of backs up what I just said. Mark 6, 5 and 6. We could go back. I want to just set the stage a little bit. Jesus has gone back to his hometown, and he's teaching in the synagogue. And when the people heard him, they were astonished at his words and said, well, is not this the carpenter's son? Do we not know his brothers and his sisters? Where did he get all these things that he's saying? And they rejected him. And look what, he, what it says in verse 5. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. 
and he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. Now, if Jesus is hindered from doing great works there because of their unbelief, how much do you think we're limited because of people's unbelief? So he says it's important for us to understand that God works in atmospheres. We have to help set the proper atmosphere. And that's one reason why we did start the healing rooms on Thursday nights, is to help people to come into an atmosphere where they're not going to be bombarded with unbelief, where they're going to have people there who are trusting God and believe God for their healing, and they have an opportunity to be around like-minded people and seek God and get their healing. And even Jesus could not overcome or override people's unbelief. You can't make people believe. Now, one thing Jesus did was it said He went about teaching in all their villages because if you're teachable, we can teach you and we can show you what the Word says. But you know, there's people who are not going to listen to what the Word says they would rather argue and tell you, that's not what my church teaches. I don't care. If you're, what your church teaches doesn't line up with the Word of God, there's a problem. If I have a choice to make, I'm always going to stand on the Word. I don't care what the church teaches. I'm going to stand on what the Word says about it. God wants His people well. What does the word tell us? 3 John chapter 2, it says, Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. He cares about us completely, spirit, soul, and body. There's not one part of you that he doesn't care about. He's concerned about every aspect of your life. And he wants us whole. The Greek word there that's used a lot for saved or, or even some healing is sozo, which means whole, being complete, body, mind, spirit, everything being made whole. So it's important for us to understand that God really wants to see us whole. If you would, we're going to have a couple of scriptures we're going to look at in Exodus 15, verse 26 and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statues, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's the first time he introduced himself to his people as the healer, and his name there is Jehovah Rapha, which means he's the healer. God our healer. You know, we talk about the angel, Raphael. That's what his name means. He's a healing angel. Now, many of the archangels have similar ministries, but Raphael is best known for being the healing angel, bringing healing to his people. Raphael, healing of God. That's what his name means. So you see here, all the way back in the Old Testament, God begins to say, I am your healer. Now if he's our healer, doesn't that mean he wants us well? He doesn't want us sick. Turn over to Exodus 23, verse 25. Ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And he says, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. God tells His people, I will take sickness from your midst. I don't want any sickness to be among you. Isn't that interesting? Now, this is where He's revealing Himself to His people as their healer. He says, I'll take sickness away from you. Now, one thing I want to point out in, verse, in chapter 15, verse 26. Let's go back there for just a minute. One thing I failed to mention that I wanted to bring out. Chapter 15, verse 26. God's saying, if you'll do all these things, He says, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians. You know, there's some people who still teach, want to try to teach that God puts sicknesses upon you 
to try to teach you something. That's not what this verse is saying. The Egyptians were the enemy. God has never put sickness on his own people if they're obedient and do what he told them to do. Now, we have a better covenant in that it's not dependent upon us and what we do. It's dependent upon what Jesus has already done for us. That's where the covenant is better. They had some, if you do this and if you do that, they had some conditional promises. But because of what Jesus has done for, their, for us, we don't have all these conditional promises. God has opened himself up and says, I want you healed, I want you whole. Deuteronomy chapter 7, we're going to look at verses 12 through 15. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you hearken to these judgments, keep and do them, the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers, and he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thine oil, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of the sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. You see, God never wants to see diseases upon us. He said, I'll put them upon your, the people who hate you. I'll put them upon your enemies. But he doesn't want those things coming upon us. And I get weary of hearing people talk about God putting something, some disease on us so that he can teach us something. If you really believe that, stop and think about what you're saying. If you really believe that, then don't you dare go to the doctor. Don't you dare take any medication to get better. Because if God's trying to teach you something, if you're trying to get well, you're going directly against his will. So you see how dumb that is? But yet we have doctors <coughs> who will take medicine to get well, and yet we try to say, God put it on us. I want you to turn over to Hebrews 13. I want to bring something in there. So we've seen here in the Old Testament, we've seen that God wanted his people well. He revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha. Hebrews 13, this is one that you need to know to, remember, to remind some of these people. Hebrews 13, 8 says this, Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, and forever. Now, if he's the same, just think about this. If he was a healer, in the Old Testament. He's not, and I'm going to show you he was a healer in the New Testament. But if he was a healer in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and he doesn't heal today, then he's changed. Something's wrong. Can you see that? I mean, that's what I, I don't understand how we can sit here and people can say he doesn't heal anymore, yet his own word says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's another place where it says, I am the Lord your God, I change not. See, that's telling us that if he ever did it before, and he doesn't do it now, then he has changed. But see, he hasn't. If he wanted his people well in the Old Testament, he wants us nowadays to be well also. Let's turn over and look. Matthew, we have several scriptures here in Matthew we're going to look at. Matthew's a good one to kind of walk through and see what God has to say. Matthew 8 and verse 17. Let's start up at 16. And it said, When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all. Does it say he only healed some? No, it says he healed all that were sick. 
all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. I don't know about where y'all come from. Where I come from, all means all. It means everybody. All the ones that were sick came to him and he healed them. Do you know you'll never find a place in the Bible where people came to Jesus and he refused to heal them? Not one. Not one time. Turn over to uh, chapter 9 and we'll look at verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now what does every mean? It means every one of them, all of them again. It means he took care of everything. How can we believe that he wants us sick when he healed every disease and every sickness that was among the people? The issue that we have is we don't have faith we don't come to him and seek him to be our healer. And that's where we run into an issue. But you see, it's not because he doesn't want to do it. It's not because he has a problem doing it. It's because generally we don't have the faith level to do it. Do you remember the woman with the issue of blood... I always think this is very interesting. She heard about Jesus. I always wonder sometimes, how did she hear? Because, you know, they didn't have the internet, and they didn't have newspapers, and they didn't have radio and TV stations, but somehow, wherever she was, she heard about Jesus. What did she do? She started saying, and it says, she said to herself, if I can just touch his clothes, or even the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Do you know the problem that we have is we too often come here with no expectation level. We should come here with the attitude of when the elders anoint me with oil and pray for me, I'm going to be healed. You see, if we did that, we'd see a lot more come along. We have the, the, the requirement as elders to pray the prayer of faith. But your response is also to come with faith, believing that when I anoint you with oil or any of these elders and I pray the prayer of faith over you, that you're going to be healed. I can usually... It's amazing to me. I, maybe you've experienced it. But you know, I can lay hands on people, and I can feel when they're making a draw on the anointing. Jesus knew this woman had touched her, had touched him. He said, who touched me? His disciples said, Jesus, look around. There's a crowd. There's all kind of people around you. Everybody's trying to touch you. How can you say, who touched me? He said, somebody touched me, and I felt the word they use is virtue, which is like the anointing, leave my body. She made a draw on the anointing. And I've laid hands on people, and I can feel when they're making a demand on that anointing, you can feel it physically. I know we don't go by our feelings, but I felt it. And I know when they've made a demand on it. So you see, that's what he's trying to get us to understand is, we need to come with expectation. My wife reminded me of this. My mom loves to go out on the dam, and she says that's where she meets with God. Well, I went walking out on the dam, and I'm out there just praying and seeking God. And I said, God, what, what's, what do I need to tell our people? Is there something you want me to take back and share with our folks? And the Lord said, 
just as clear as I'm standing here today. He said, go back and tell them they need to raise their level of expectation. But you see, part of it is we limit Him. We don't come with faith. We don't come with expectation. And we've got to get to the point where we come with great expectation that God's going to move today. We're going to see some great things. And we're going to see people healed by the power of God when we come here to this church. We've laid a lot on the line. I guess you guys know this. We've got a sign out front. What does it say? Healing Center of Shelby. We need to start seeing that happen more frequently. I, we've been seeing people healed. We've been seeing some great things come about. But it should be every Sunday, there should be bigger and bigger things happening because we've set the stage, we've created the right atmosphere. God can come in and do what He wants to do. Turn with me to in Matthew, you're still in Matthew 14. Let's look at verse 14. It says this, And Jesus went forth, and He saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion toward them, and He healed their sick. Chapter 15, turn over to verse 30. It says this, And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus healed everybody that came to him. I want to show you one other thing, because what I'm trying to do is kind of lay a foundation for you to understand. God was the healer in the Old Testament. God's the healer in the New Testament. God's always been a healing God. And we want to see the attitude that God has. John 5, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Turn over to chapter 10. Look at verse 37. He says this, If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. Verse 38, But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works. That ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Chapter 14. Let's look at 8 through 11 there. 14, beginning with verse 8. Philip saith unto the Lord, Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that, that doeth the works, that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Why did Jesus heal? He healed because God showed him what to do. And God the Father wanted us healed. He said, if you don't believe in me, just believe me for the very work's sake. He said that in two of the verses that we just read. He did these works, and he said over and over again, I'm not doing these of myself. Well, I can only do what I see the Father doing. He could not heal anybody unless he saw the Father healing. And if the Father healed in the Old Testament, which He did, as I showed you, 
He called himself Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals you. And he healed in Jesus' ministry. And Jesus said, I'm doing what the Father showed me to do. How can we not see that the heart of God the Father is for us to be healed? We've had an opportunity through what Jesus said and did to know what the heart of the Father is. And everything we see shows us a Father who loves us, cares for us, and wants us totally whole, not just in our bodies, but in every way. You see, it's hard for us at times because some of us may not have had a good Father. And when we talk about fathers, sometimes people throw up a, a bit of a wall because they say, well, if he's a father, you know, I remember how my father was, and he wasn't a good, a good role model. He wasn't a good father to me. But God's so far above and beyond any person on this earth. And his love for us is so different than earthly love. He talks about if you earthly fathers know how to give good things to your children, how much more does a father want to give good things to his children? God wants you whole. God wants you well. Why do we go through some of the things we go through? I don't know. But the thing about it is, is that God wants to bring us through every one of them victorious. He doesn't want us to wallow there. He wants us to have faith in Him. And you know, sometimes we need some of these trials just to help our faith build and get us to the point where we're trusting solely in Him. You cannot always trust in doctors. You can't trust in medication. The only thing you can totally trust in is God Himself. And when we get to that point, then he can do his work. I thank God that he's given us doctors. I thank God for the medications that he's given us. I thank God for any of the ways that he's provided healing for his people. Have faith in God. Come with expectation. And let God be God and do what he wants to do. All of you have joined us by television. I want to thank you for being with us. We're going to disconnect right now, but... May you begin to dig for yourself and not just listen to what your church teaches and see the truth of God's Word. God wants us healthy and whole. Thank you for joining us. My prayer for you this week is that you have made Jesus Lord of your life. If not, I pray that you would have a personal visitation from Him this week in which you do accept Him as Lord of your life. Thank you, and we will see you next week. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church. Follow us on Facebook, and you can also see our sermons published on YouTube.